been a while since I watched that video, but I remember thinking at the time that his pink noise tests were nonsense based on a complete misunderstanding of physics and maths. Well, there's a position of knowledge and, and um, that's a soapbox to stand on. Two mics on the same source are correlated. If the fundamental of the kick is 50 hertz and both mics are picking up that fundamental, then you will see similar phase and comb issues, but shift it a little depending on the mix level and relative phase and frequency responses of the mic. On a very simplistic level, there is some uh, correctness to this, but this is why testing is so important and why I do demos of exactly this so we can hear and see whether or not what hypothetically we are told will happen versus what actually happens in the real world. There is definitely merit to his pink noise tests and Fletch44 says there is no merit to his pink noise tests. Two separate pink noise sources are entirely uncorrelated and the universe would have to be broken for there to be resultant comb filtering. Two mics on the same source are correlated. There is no getting around that regardless of the difference in the mics. You cannot use two uncorrelated sources to represent two different mics on one source. It's pure nonsense and his takeaways from his experiment are garbage as a result. What he should have done for his experiment was use two different microphones on a single acoustic source of pink noise. The wavelengths at which his approach would be audible throughout a large section of the audience are the same ones and that the two mics would be most correlated at the at i.e. the fundamental frequency of the instrument being mic'd and therefore his approach is rubbish for low mid and higher frequencies you just need to take a step or two to change phase interactions between the two sides of the PA So I put two mics on this speaker, a Royer ribbon in the front and an Audix OM7 in the back. It's a flat panel speaker and um, should do a pretty good job of giving us decorrelated sound. And recorded them both directly into this Tascam recorder. They went through an X32 console and I EQ'd them up a bit to kind of get them to sound similar. Kind of like what I do when I'm mixing live. I use two different mics, I mic different parts of the speaker and cabinet, and I EQ them both to sound similar within the realm of what I'm looking for. So this has got a recording of that. Let's run into this small amplifier here. And also, if you do have questions about what I'm doing, this stuff is pretty easy to replicate. So it'd be cool to see uh, anybody who's like, hey, what about this? I tried it and this happened and uh, open a discussion on this. Okay, so I'm gonna hook up both speakers to one of the microphone outs. We'll hit play. We can hear it. And turn this up a little more. going to do is I'm going to put a polarity reverse. I made a polarity reverse RCA adapter. These speakers are running on our, this amp has got RCA out so I wired to it. I put a polarity reverse on one of the speakers. So I'm going to unplug the RCA here and plug the polarity reverse the, into that and we will turn this on again. Okay, so I showed what happens when the first example was the same signal run to two different sources and one moving farther and away and then moving them farther and away. Now this would be a similar scenario. Obviously we're not going to lift up those speakers and move them close and far, but as you walk across, 
the audience area, you get closer to one speaker and farther from another, and emulating that by moving these speakers, these small speakers, gives you that same sound. And if you fire up pink noise in your PA and you walk across, you'll hear that if you have the same sound coming out of multiple sources. All right, so that was polarity reverse with one mic. Start with, now this will be the other mic without a polarity reverse. And let's go ahead and start that. And the other mic with a polarity verse. All right, so now we're listening to mic number two with polarity reverse. Now, the reason I'm testing with polarity reverse is we want to see how well they cancel. When signals are decorrelated, they will never cancel well. If they're identical, they will cancel very well. I avoid using polarity reverse in live environments at all costs when it applies to speakers. The only time I use it is to fix something or to intentionally cancel something out. And I can talk about that more in other videos. Um, let's see. So now what we're going to do is we will go to two different sources. So I'm going to take this polarity reverse off. I'm going to leave it dangling on the cable but not plugged into anything. And I'm going to plug this into the other speaker. So now what we're going to hear is the two different microphones on the exact same speaker, just miking it with different mics in a different way. And let's go ahead and play that. <laughs> And we will do that with a polarity reverse. Okay, so now this is a polarity reverse on one of the mics and not on the other. And remember with the same microphone one run to both speakers, we got a real quiet, it was really phasey in the middle. Let's see what happens now. <laughs> All right, well, I'm not in front of the speakers like that mic is, but I could definitely hear that it did not cancel the same way that it did with the single mic. So there's a real world demonstration of decorrelating two different microphones on the same exact sound source. Now we could do better than that. I mic'd a little tiny speaker, but if you're micing a guitar, acoustic guitar, or you're micing, you know, 12 inch cone speakers, uh, Fender Twin, one mic in front, another mic in back, polarity reversed on the rear one, and EQing them, finding those spots. Where you place a mic on an instrument is 
absolutely critical. I highly recommend putting a pair of in-ears on and um, PFLing the channels while you mic, while the band is rehearsing and finding those sweet spots and marking them. You can't fix it. You can't totally decouple all this stuff. But what you can do is create a landscape where all of the problems don't pile up in exactly the same spot for every single instrument. And that is, a, that is accomplished by diversifying the instruments in the left-right panorama. Cat Forever, I've watched enough of his videos to know that Dave's response would be cool. You should test that out. Exactly. Um, the Lion X, Edit, there's a full video where it talks about it for reference. This is not an interview, OP referring, um, I'm gonna skip that. The fact that he thought that using two completely separate noise sources for each speaker was in any way representative of hard panning a double mic instrument shows how little he understands what he's talking about. You know what, I'm not even gonna bother reading the rest of it. Cool, that's been kind of fun. And uh, I enjoy the discourse. And if you like Sound Emic Sound Face, buy a shirt. I make fives of dollars and um, I'll keep doing videos free for the public and I will continue to expand the member side where I share more in-depth information. Awesome. <laughs>